Greetings. Welcome to ITR Live. I'm your host, Chris Hagan. We are back here in Studio 130 for another fun-filled, action-packed episode of the Gold Standard and Iowa Conservative Podcast. Join here in studio with John Hendrickson and the long-lost um, third member of the ITR Live Podcast, Chris Ingstead. It's really good to be back, you guys. You didn't yeah. look thrilled when I asked if you wanted to sit down with us. So I appreciate you putting on your game face. I was just, thankfully, you let me come in here with zero preparation. And I don't think the listeners are going to be able to tell. They're going to think this is a well-planned-out episode. So Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that, that's right. Uh, John, you had a long weekend. How was it? It was nice. How yeah. was it? And I brought the winter, we- winter weather back with me. So How much how much snow when you were leaving? Well, it was uh, around 16 inches. 16 inches. Yeah. Just, yeah. A, just a small. Yeah. Uh, is that, is that is this considered late winter, early spring? What what would you call late winter? Late winter, still? yeah. Okay, well, there's been snow in June. That doesn't surprise yeah. me. Yeah. Well, well, good. Well, we had the um, snow move in today, uh, gentlemen, briefly this morning while we were attending our local county budget review hearing. Yeah. So it's just kind of an unexpected uh, treat there, as uh, as I think the. Uh, the Board of Supervisors were longingly looking outside, wishing that they were out in the snow instead of listening to uh, upset taxpayers. Yep. But uh, Well, Chris, a- they kind of brought that on themselves with yeah. a giant proposed tax increase by the yeah. Dallas County yeah. Supervisors. So just to set the stage a little bit, um, and I want to, so Chris and I, we were at the uh, Dallas County budget review hearing. John, you went to the City of West Des Moines budget hearing last week, and last I don't remember. Week, yeah. I don't remember if we talked about that on the podcast or not. Did we? I don't believe we did. Okay, so yeah. I, I wanted to. You know, we don't have a a a you know rigid agenda that we're trying to get through, but we had. I I just want to talk about what our experiences were at those two budget hearings, what we've heard from other people around the state, what folks should expect, because there's still ones that. People can, a lot of them still haven't happened yet. Um, are people getting it? Are they not? So anyway, just to kind of set the stage of all the things that, that we're going to try and cover today. Um, so since Chris and I were at um, Dallas County this morning and it's fresh in our minds, um, Chris, I'm going to let you kind of take it away from there. We had, like you said, had some upset taxpayers. I don't think there's anybody in the room that was, besides the staff, that was, um, really excited about the 25% uh, property tax. The supervisors increase. seemed pretty pleased they, with the they budget were, they put they, forth, they, they were, which I think irritated me more than anything else, which, yeah. was just how okay they seemed to be with that. Yeah, it was It was a little, I guess, they seemed somewhat proud of it. But go ahead. I mean, what was your experience? Is, is it what you expect? Because this is the first time, this is the first year we've done these things. Yeah, so. and you know, I, I went as a private citizen today. This was not in an ITR capacity. This was me as a Dallas County taxpayer. And we got the notice and worked through it. That was a common theme, by the way. And yeah. that, that, that the notices that came out with good intent um, didn't tell most people anything they needed no. to know. No. In, in fact, there's one gentleman that was just very confused by it, thought that his taxes were only going up 2% or down or, because of another line. It was just, it's, it's yep. not working. Yep. But, but nonetheless people did pay attention to the time and place of the meeting and showed up and um, maybe later we can go with some of the other comments, but I made the point that Dallas County looks to be increasing their budget by 25%. They're going to collect 25% more property tax dollars next year. Yeah. And I mean, just to, I, I, this is such an important part because we talk all the ways about it's the spending spending year over year, take away all the other, you know, Formulas and math and and levies and millage, the the Dallas County is going to take in twenty five percent more year over year than they did the year prior. Yeah, and that was one of my disappointments. Is some of the elected officials and the staff kept talking about the rates and how it has changed. They talk about valuations and taxable growth and valuation growth and percentages of growth. And the point that I tried to make was, well, let's put all that aside. You guys are planning to take twenty five percent more. And property taxes. And and for me, my personal share of that, my Dallas County tax bill is set to go up 15% next year. And, you know, I, I made the point, I've got four kids, four young kids. I'm still buying diapers. Our trips to the grocery store have only gotten more expensive. And so when I see local government come to me and say, we're going to have a 25% tax increase, uh, that's just really hard to take. And I, I tried to make that point to them. And as they tried to justify some of these increases, we didn't have a choice and we had to, 
I, I again brought it back to my family budget. If there's some cost increase we truly can't avoid or put off, mm-hmm. then we make do without something else. We make some adjustments. It's not an option for us to just increase all of our spending by 25% in a year. Only in government could they propose that and think this makes all the sense in the world. And so I just ask that they consider um, not, not their own personal, you know, their, their own local government spending plans, but think about the budgets of the people in Dallas County, right? Well, they still have time. They could, they could scale down the rate they're planning to ask for. They could scale down the amount of dollars they're planning to ask for, and they could avoid uh, handing out 15% tax increases to Dallas County residents like myself. And that was the point yeah. that I tried to make. And I think if we're being fair about it, Chris, and there was a lot, a lot said there, but I think that was actually a pretty common theme, right? Like getting, quit, quit focusing on the talk about exactly how we arrive at a, at a budget or growth or rates, right? And just talk about the spending <laughs> and what it means. There are a lot of people there who are feeling the pressure um, at the grocery store, at the gas pump and elsewhere. And they really don't think it's a good idea for county government to come around and take a big swipe at them. Yep. You know, I, I, I thought your comments were spot on today. So I, because this is all brand new and the counties can largely administer these meetings however they want, it, Dallas County seemed to be kind of a free-for-all. They mm-hmm. just kind of called the meeting to order and does anybody have any questions? And people just started talking and largely the staff ended up answering most of the questions, which was a little bit disappointing. Yeah, I don't, Chris, I don't, I don't know if, if, the, um, if the electeds were hiding behind the staff and letting them take all of it. I don't know if they don't well, actually know and they've just given in to the staff, but I was disappointed at, at the electeds' response yeah. to this. They just kept looking to their different staff members for, for the answers. I, or, or, yeah. or they kept looking at the staff members and letting them lead the tough discussions. Yeah, I think, I think there was definitely some of that. I think other parts of it were technical. And staff's going to understand the technical parts of what's going on better. I, I can understand that. Um, and I, I'm certainly not. I agree. And I, in my own comments were a little bit to that end that you know, they should be the ones that are answering questions. As a public hearing, I didn't think they were even obligated to answer questions if they didn't want to. So I, that's why I want to get John's perspective. And I know that we talked with uh, somebody who was at the city of Johnston hearing where it was just everybody got two minutes to speak. You can speak your mind and leave. It wasn't a back and forth with the elected officials. And that's the way we would run public hearings at the Capitol, which I know you've been a part of before, Chris, where you just sign up, speak, everybody sits there and pretends to listen, and then you leave. Well, that's that's what happened in Glenwood, where I, Tara Lopez, right. had a big, big presence, too, in Mills County, is they had 70 people show up to one of the hearings, and they said, everybody, the meeting's going to last for an hour, everybody can have three minutes, I two minutes, whatever. they didn't even get through everybody. It was right. just comments done on to the next one. And then the meeting's over. Right. So, I, I mean, I guess I appreciate being able to have some interaction with the folks in Dallas County, sure. because I don't think that happened everywhere. John, you were in West Des Moines. How did, how did the format, how did that play out there or whatever else your perspectives were yeah. on it? I, I, <clears throat> I thought the West Des Moines one was very well organized. Uh, I counted, I believe 11 people on the audience. Uh, I don't know if they were all citizens. Some might have been staff. There's a lot of staff in the back of the room that were seated at, seated at tables. But uh, when the meeting was called to order, uh, the mayor said that, uh, you know, went through the agenda. And those who wanted to address on uh, that agenda item, which was, the, which was the hearing, were given five minutes. And one gentleman even had his own PowerPoint that they allowed uh, him to show and, and – uh, but it was very civil. I mean, it was very orderly. Uh, three people spoke. Interestingly enough, what surprised me is uh, uh, two people, which, you know, in my biased opinion, I would say were very, you know, to call them liberal would be uh, would be nice, but they were very far to the left, and they were actually advocating for higher taxes and wanting, uh, mm-hmm. uh, saying that any property tax relief would devastate the city of West Des Moines, which... I think right. it was nonsense. The and city of West Des Moines is r- right on the edge. Right there. Yeah, yeah, you never yeah. know and, what uh, one next year might and, hold there. Uh, one of them even said if you cut property taxes, it's going to kill off all the new trees because there won't be enough people to water them uh, on the city payroll. So that was one oh. reason to... Uh, wow. But anyways, uh, uh, but no, it was very yeah. orderly, and, and the uh, people would give their comments, and uh, the mayor would kind of respond, but the... Uh, 
And I don't know if you want my commentary on their responses, but I wanted to say but, a comment uh, about liberals not thinking that anything, yes. <laughs> even even growth of plant life, can yeah. occur without government intervention. Yes, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. I think that's pretty yeah. self self evident. And but uh, uh, go ahead. The uh, uh, but no, I I thought it was very civil, very orderly. I, I thought more people would would have attended. Uh, the people that did speak, you know, there's a lot of, and I agree, these notices have been complicated, but the people that spoke at West Des Moines, at least, whether you, you know, I agreed with their comments or not. I mean, one lady made perfectly sense and was frustrated about her tax bill going up. Uh, people understand what's going on. And I think a lot of local governments are, are just adding fuel to the fire by basically saying that these notices aren't any good. I mean, yes, they should they, be improved. Yeah. But it, it's also um, a mechanism for them to try to discredit the whole idea of direct notification. <laughs> And so, yes, definitely these notices need to be improved. John, but, you, know, you know, to that point, one of the Dallas County supervisors said, you know, that the, the, the legislature is making us wave these things in your face. But I, I guess it's working because there's more people to budget here than we've ever had before. Yeah. And I guess I'd say, well, and, for as flawed as that document is, correct. it got 25 people to yeah. show up to Adele today. At, if nothing else, you get that time and the place that drops in your mailbox. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So I, I, it's fine. Obviously, the form needs work. It is confusing. It's missing the one piece of information that it was always intended to have, which is how much is my, how much are my taxes going up right now? You have to go and download a calculator from the Department of Management, or if you really want to be slick about it, you go to itrlocal.org and get the online version of that exact same calculator. Much easier uh, there, but you shouldn't have to do that. And, and as the point we've kind of joked around in the office. That's not complicated. They don't have any problem printing that out when they send you your bill. That's right, yeah. So do, spare me that it's too complicated to, to spell out what the tax increase part is that because when it comes back around next time, it'll be a piece of cake for them to mail that out and what the bill actually is. So, um, no, I think that's right. Um, did, did they... At, and I don't know if you if you mentioned this directly, John, but was it was it interactive? Were were the city staff answering questions or no? The staff did not. I I mean there there was uh, and I this was my fault. I left my glasses in in the cab, and so I I could not see the nameplates of. And I think it was a city manager that would kind of oh. uh, uh, answer some questions, but mostly it was the mayor who would uh-huh. respond uh, after people spoke, yeah. and then. Uh, some of the there was mainly two counselors that would uh, city councilmen that would uh, offer some responses as well, but it was mostly the three people gave their remarks, and then there was uh, the mayor would briefly respond, and then there and then yeah. there yeah. was uh, I think three of the councilmen that responded afterwards, yeah. kind of in more detail. Chris, there was there was a lot of stuff said mm-hmm. at, at Dallas County, yeah, um, and there were some really good things said uh, there. And one of the things I thought was, was actually a great point towards the end is one of the citizens asked the elected officials, they said, it was clear they were about to adjourn the meeting. He said, hey, I have one last question. Is this going to make a difference? Are you guys really going to take this input or do you already have your budget made? And frankly, two of the supervisors looked like a deer in, like deer in headlights and just sort of thought, and it's, I think you might have your answer with those two. Yeah. But one of them spoke up and I, I tend to think he probably meant it. Mm-hmm because he was also the most quiet during the meeting. And, and he said, I've let all you, you know, I wanted to listen to hear what everybody had to say. We'll go back and look again. And for me, everything is on the table. And that'll be interesting yep. uh, because, because you cannot walk away from that meeting today and say, yep, the taxpayers of Dallas County definitely are okay with the tax increase this big. Yeah. Right? So, so it will be really interesting to see if they move right ahead with these plans or if they do listen and respond to their taxpayers even a even a little bit uh and i will tell you if if they listen to their taxpayer and maybe throttle down some of their plans a little bit i i will look forward to coming back here and telling you that these folks were were at least somewhat responsive um so time will tell if these folks actually want to listen to their taxpayer if they've already decided to to spend all the money and that that was the opposite in west des moines i got the sense that the um elected officials who did address the audience Mm -hmm. uh basically defended their budgeting and basically said that we're doing the best we can and there's really we're already uh, running on bare bones and and so therefore we're gonna just go forward and uh 
I mean, whether that can, that can obviously be debated. Um, one of one of the uh, supervisors in Dallas County actually, I think, made a a pretty good point in that. You know, the, this budget is something that has been worked on for months leading yep. up to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and so then they 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 kind of sum that up, and then take it to the well to the hearing, I guess. He said, you know, no one shows up at these things when we're talking to the sheriff or to the conservation board or whatever. And so like, you are all welcome to come to those when we're actually getting down in the nitty gritty on the budget. And I appreciate that. I don't know that anyone actually has a time to do it, but if you take, we, we had, uh, there was one, it wasn't anyone. I don't think we knew who was frustrated at the level of property tax increase, but really liked the bike trails. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then maybe he could come to the hearing when they discuss the money for the bike trails and kind of give that opinion. It's like, okay, I support this, but please keep it limited and whatever. The, I, I did think that was a good a good point to be made, that there are a lot of and that is, meetings and points where people can engage in this process. And that is true, and that is, is a fair point to make. But I think it's also a fair point as a, as a voter, as a taxpayer, as a citizen to say, well, most of you campaigned on some sort of platform, and, and I think all three of the Dallas County supervisors campaign probably on a platform of some level of fiscal conservatism. Yes. So I don't know that we should feel we have to show up at the budget meeting to remind you to govern in the way in which you campaign uh, and, and don't tout your conservative credentials and then propose a, you know, 25% spending increase. So yes, fair point. And citizens who want to show up to all the steps in the process, you, you can and you should. But also elected officials, you have a responsibility to, to govern accordingly. Well, I guess my, maybe my biggest takeaway from the meeting this morning was that uh, certainly the, the electeds and the staff understood that this was a, a bigger turnout, I think, than they were expecting. Yep. Never done this before. And people were frustrated and they wanted answers and they didn't always get them and didn't always like the answers they were given. And that changes things. And we've talked about this before mm-hmm. that... It doesn't take a lot of folks showing up and expressing their opinion to actually impact the direction of things. I don't know. I suspect that that budget in Dallas County is is locked and loaded, but it also wouldn't surprise me if they go back to the drawing board and try and find a few places to trim. Mm-hmm. It'd be, well, well, I Chris, because I think they felt it. They did, and and they showed um, to the the finance director. I don't know if that's exactly his title. Yeah. I think he is very knowledgeable and knows yeah, what he's seemed, doing. Yeah, seemed really sharp. Uh, and- uh, his job is not necessarily looking out for the taxpayer number one, right? He's he's tasked with a lot of things, and and so he's 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 compiling the budget and putting yes. it together. Okay, and he listed almost a, not line by line, but at least categorically some of the increases yeah. year over year that led to this yeah. big growth. And I don't know that anything I have not scrutinized it, but as it was on the screen, I don't know that I saw anything that said that is a terrible idea. We should never spend money. Right. But when you're talking about a 25% jump in your, in your property taxes year over year, and you're talking about 7 or $8 million, maybe some of those things you could do this year, and, and a couple more you could do next year, and a couple more the year after that. But it seems like, it seems like on a lot of things, they just went for it, and we will do it all now. No. And, and again, I would say that local governments have to learn uh, the skill of, of prioritizing. And, and sometimes that answer is not no forever. It's just no right now. Yeah. Well, I want to give out a... Chris, and Chris, you've never put together any sort of government budget or anything <laughs> saying that, so you don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah. just trust me. I want to give a shout out to Leader Whitber because I think, you know, people need to realize that the budget targets came out, and I know this is a separate yeah. issue, but uh, I, I think it's just as important. And the Senate budget target keeps spending in line with population and inflation, which is very reasonable. Yeah. And, and I think that's important, and that's a lesson that locals can, can follow. And so the Senate Republicans have done an excellent job in, in trying to control spending yep. and focus on priorities. And, and it's, it's, it's not easy because what we're seeing at the local level is there's such a demand for services. You, right. you, know, you mentioned yeah. bike trails. Uh, there's all kinds of different uh, needs that are going on, yep. and uh, uh, there has to be a balance with that well, because otherwise you're not going to have any property tax relief. And this is why, you know, I want to say that uh, one of the better property tax reform ideas that came out a few years ago was by Senator Brad Zahn. 
who basically put out a spending limit on the entire budget. You know, and this is the other problem with property taxes is everybody wants to make it so damn complicated that nobody can figure it out. And that's a weapon right. to hide behind it. And so what Senator Zahn said, and I think it was, you know, budgets can grow by a certain percent and that's it. Yeah. And if they want to, if they want to go over that, then it's the vote of the people. It's sort of a localized taper. And that, that is the solution John, for I, this whole problem. I am certain that regardless of what decisions are made community by community, people will still be mad about property taxes and our local officials, or excuse me, our elected officials at the state level are going to hear from their voters. And I, when they do, I hope they remember to your point, John, the budget discipline they instilled on themselves at the state level to craft a budget in some level of reasonable growth. And, and I hope they would expect that same spending and, and, and fiscal discipline at the local level, right? It, because they're going through it themselves as they craft the state's budget the folks doing uh, the same thing at the local level should have to have to adhere to the same discipline. And I, and I hope that our state folks remember that as those discussions continue because they've done yeah. the hard work. That's right. I, the, so in picking up on that too, is that as these folks continue to be frustrated, they're looking for, they're looking for help from elected officials at any level who is willing to listen. Mm-hmm. And there are some, cities that are listening. There's some counties that are listening, some schools that are, that are trying to do what they can. And the state legislature is listening. And so um, the, you're going to see policy responses to that because the people of Iowa are demanding it. Um, you know, I wanted to make a point too, that, that you, you don't necessarily have to show up at one of these budget hearings. Now, Dallas County was at 8 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. You know, thankfully, we work for a uh, tax advocacy group that allows its employees to attend their local budget review hearings as part of their their uh, their time. But um, you know, there were probably a lot of retirees or self employed folks in the in the in the room. Um, but you can you can also email these folks mm-hmm. or call them, and, yes. and we had a member. Um, that did that and and forwarded uh, to us kind of what what he and had a put, loyal uh, podcast yeah, listener. Yeah, I yeah. Say. so yes, so yeah, so yeah. John, if you're listening, this is yeah. this is your your time to shine. But um, anyway, you know, I thought he sent a a terrific, respectful, uh, kind of on message that you know this is a big increase. I'm struggling. You know, it's it's year over year. It's a lot, and and please do what you can to check this, and got a great response i think from from an elected official that at least was was responding that i understand that it's a lot i i I probably would have wanted a little bit more uh i I don't think they understood the the new legislation that well but uh if your elected officials are doing their job right um you'll get a response from them Mm -hmm. might not be what you want to hear i mean i I I had the same experience and i and i said today publicly i appreciated the response and and I, i hope if folks as you voice your opinion you can be yeah. for for the budget or against it. You can do it via email or in person. I hope you are um, respectful, and I hope you mm-hmm. are measured, and I hope you express yourself and just tell them what you feel and how it's impacting you. And, and I, I kind of wanted to make this point earlier is that I, I don't think this is something that is, you know, the 25% Dallas County increase that's unique to counties or high-growth counties or whatever, and, and maybe the cities it's easier because – John's where he's at here, John, our, our loyal podcast listener, I don't know if it's, it's directly related, but it is a growing city and county. Yeah. Okay. Where he's at, it is the city that's raising the levy and raising their tax collections. The county is doing a pretty good job and the city's doing a pretty good job. So, you know, clearly it's, it's not a, well, something in the law went wrong for counties. That's, that's not the case. I think it really does come down to decisions being made at the local level. And I guess we'll go ahead, Chris. No, oh, I, I, mean, I, I, look, I think we, we, we don't just see our own, right. As a right. statewide organization, we hear from folks across the state and see what's being proposed. Right. And there's not exactly a rhyme or reason as to which ones seem to be doing well and which ones don't in terms of size or, or city, county school, like it's across the board mixed results. Yeah. But I think what, what also with this, this email and the situation in this County that we got it just reinforces it's about the spending. It's not about the formula handed down by the legislature on growth. Yes, it impacts what they can spend. No question, but it, it doesn't, it's no, it not, doesn't. it's not, it, well, it slows down with their amount they can capture off of the new, like Dallas County could have grown even more or they could have 
push less of it on us. If, yeah, you know it's, what it's, I mean? It's different numbers in the equation yes, to get that, to the same point. That Yes, and I think that's the point that I'm very clumsily trying to make. Yeah. Is that, yes, I know, I, I, I know, I know you agree with that. I know you're with uh, me. But is that it is how much they spend. Yes. It's not their assessment. It is not the equation. It's not the 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 bill passed in the legislature, John. It's not it's not any of those things. It's how much they're spending. And that has to be kept top of mind. And if you still have a chance to attend one of these hearings, folks, that has to be the the lead is that it is their spending. They have the opportunity to control it. And you don't want to have to keep paying this increased amount year over year. Yep. And so keep that in mind as you go out. But if you can't make it, please take the opportunity to email them. If you think somebody's out of line or you just like even, even no more like, hey, I, I, I got some questions about this. Why is this going up this much? I genuinely like, you know, your, your elected official should give you a good answer. Um, so please do that. Uh, John, you mentioned uh, budget targets. Those are out. Yes, and for yeah. those that don't, that's kind of how the legislature, and I'm going to touch on this briefly as we, uh, wrap up, but that's sort of the beginning of the end mm-hmm. for the legislative session. We enter our landing pattern, right? Yeah. So the House and the Senate have both released a budget target, which is you know each of the the functional areas of the budget. They they're broken down in individual spending bills. You'll have one for health and human services. You'll have one for uh, justice systems. You'll have one for uh, you know transportation and the DOT and all those different areas, right? And so what they'll do is they'll break that down and say, okay, health and human services, here's how much money you get to spend this year. You fill in the blanks. And those are the targets that come down and they, they total up to what is the big number in spending. And so the, the House and the Senate aren't quite on the same page yet. It's perfectly normal. That's the way it is. They're separate, separate chambers. They should have different numbers usually. And they'll work it out. But it's a, it's a good step towards them being done. I suspect the legislature is done within two to three weeks, which will put them slightly into overtime, but which I don't understand why, but yet here we are. But John, your point is correct. that This is just like it's the spending at the local level that matters. <clears throat> it's also the spending at the state level that's going to drive what your tax burden is at the state level. They have <clears throat> over the last several years done a very good job of holding the line on spending and they need to make sure that they continue to hold the line so that we can uh, make sure that what we've done already on taxes works and we have the opportunity to go further. Yep. Did I say enough? Oh, I, I think that you're absolutely right. Okay. That's what yeah, I wanted. I was yeah. just fishing for that, John. Yeah. Just tell me I'm yeah. absolutely right. That's, that's all uh, I need. That was, Cause uh, Chris is over here telling me that yeah. I just completely biffed it on no, the other one. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I guess I'll, I'll close with this. You know, I would love to hear, we would love to hear people's experiences yeah. with their budget review hearing locally. So um, please drop us a line. Give us an idea of what's going on in your community. We'd love to hear from you. Go to itrlocal.org. You can get some information, head in the meeting. And uh, I think that uh, <clears throat> we'd just like to know what's going on out around the state of Iowa. Yeah. So, all right, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube and Rumble. And with all of that, we will see you next time on ITR Live.